Welcome to Podcast Vlogging Tips and Tricks with Alex Merced. On this podcast, we're going to talk about podcast hosting, podcast recording, promoting, and monetization. We'll also interview podcast hosts about what works and what doesn't work in the podcasting world. If you enjoy the show, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash alexmerced. Also, if you need hosting for your podcast or your website, head over to libertydeal.info to find out about great deals along with special benefits for taking advantage of those deals. Thank you very much. Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com and welcome to another episode of podcast and vlogging tips and tricks. So in the first episode, we talk about hosting. So again, we're talking about using a hosting service like buzzsprout.com or hosting a WordPress install and using Simply Serious Podcasting as a plugin to do your uh, WordPress hosting or your podcast hosting. And again, you can get good deals on that hosting if you head over to Liberty Deal. Dot info and you can take advantage of the deals and get some extra benefits out of taking advantage of them to get a good price and some cool benefits now in the second episode we talked about recording so using your phone to record using your laptop record what software you might have um, but more than just the basic logistics of it we'll probably spend another episode at some point talking more about actual hardware good mics bad mics uh, and other different things that you may want to purchase now in today's episode what I want to talk about is is a basically an initial episode talking about uh, syndicating your podcast in the sense of making sure that it gets out there to as many places as possible and using social media to start marketing your podcast. Now, there's a lot of different social media outlets out there, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, etc. And it can take a lot of time posting to all of them every time you have a new episode. So are there any tips or tricks for doing so? Now, there's two platforms or two services that are really useful in regards to making that happen. One of them is Hootsuite, which is awesome. And they have a free service where you can get up to connect up to five social media accounts for free. But basically what Hootsuite does, and it has a smartphone app, so that way you can do it from your smartphone, it allows you to post to your Facebook profile, your Facebook page, Instagram, Google+, and onto Twitter, simultaneously so what you could do is you could start a google plus page for your podcast start a twitter profile for your podcast start a facebook page for your podcast um, and an instagram account for your podcast connect them all to your hootsuite account for that podcast again free allows you to connect up to five social media accounts and then every time you post a new episode what you would do is just create like a square image so um, basically, you can either have someone do it on Fiverr.com or do something quick on your iPhone. Now, when it comes to making really good images um, or really quick images that you can use for promotional purposes, a couple apps that I use is the Studio app, which I know is on the iPhone. Uh, I don't know if it's on the Android. Same thing goes for Adobe Spark images. But with both of these apps, you can create sort of Instagram square images and with good fonts and really good uh, design. So you create those images that kind of promote uh, your podcast, saying this is the podcast episode, subscribe to it on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. And then what you can do is you can share it to all four of your social media platforms. You can share it to Google, Instagram, Google, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook in one post. So literally with through Hootsuite, it takes you two minutes, you share it to everywhere, and then what you want to do is maybe include some hashtags that are relevant. So, for example, my main podcast, I mainly talk about, like, libertarian politics and stuff like that. So, what I usually do is use, like, a hashtag, like, libertarian. So, hashtag libertarian, hashtag liberty, something like that. So, that way people who are looking up those terms will find it. At the same time, it also, again, having that stuff pop up in as many places as possible also helps search engine optimization. So, so that sort of would be the first step. So, again, that makes it really easy for you to syndicate um where people can see your podcast. Now, there's a couple places. I don't remember if Hootsuite actually posts to Pinterest, but Pinterest is another one to think about. And it all just depends on how you use these and what communities you're part of. So for with any of these networks, a good thing to do is ex- use them for a little bit. So have your own profile that you sit there and try to get involved in the community as a fan so you can see kind of how other podcasts use it. 
and I'm going to talk about more network specific techniques in future podcasts so like specific techniques i've used for building up my facebook page audience my twitter uh followers etc a lot of times the best way to do is just participation on the network so the more you talk to other people you interact with other people on a social network the bigger your reach is going to be but creating that podcast specific page for on twitter instagram facebook and google plus and posting it through Hootsuite is a good way to get the word out there very quickly. And then also what you can do is you can promote, what you want to do is post like interactive profile um, posts in between. So basically ask a question that's relative to your um, podcast in particular. So for example, if I being doing a libertarian podcast, I may ask like, okay, what issue do people care about most? And then what I'll do is I'll, for my own personal profile, share that so basically if it's twitter i will retweet my podcast twitter account and its post so that way other people can start replying to it and start following that twitter account and this is because i've developed my own following by just basically tweeting with other people over time so basically i find people who are interested in the same things that i'm interested into or part of the community that i'm targeting and i'll interact with them so i'll tweet with them and try to give them sort of value-added responses. So if they're doing a discussion with their Twitter following, I'll jump in the conversation, try to make sure I, I, I do some sort of added value to the conversation. That builds up the interest of the other people who are part of that conversation to follow me as well. And then, I, and then, I, then again, I can channel that, that as an initial start for the podcast one. Okay? And then again, I do this separately because sometimes people just want to know when the podcast episodes are out versus also getting all my own personal updates along with my podcast updates. So that's why I personally like to have two separate profiles. Some people don't want to manage so much social media, but to me, services like Hootsuite make it convenient enough to do so. And then I pay for the, the Hootsuite Pro where I can manage up to 50 social profiles. So doing so isn't overly difficult. But... So, and it would be the same logic for Facebook. So basically you build up your own Facebook profile, you try to connect with people who are interested in the same thing as you are, and then what you do is you would share your Facebook page's posts to help build the initial likes. And again, this is basically how you would do it for free. Once you start will be willing to put together an advertising budget and paid for advertising, there's all sorts of new techniques that we'll discuss in future episodes. Now, Pinterest is an interesting one because basically you can create very specific boards. So basically you can create a board for your podcast, and you can include podcast episodes, basically your your images for your podcast episodes on there with a link to the podcast. And it's just another way for people to find your podcast, etc. Again, the more places you put it, the more likeliness that someone can find it. And as I mentioned in the previous podcast, I mentioned the the, the, the value in putting it up on audio websites. So a couple of the main ones, SoundCloud is sort of the, the household name. Everyone knows SoundCloud.com as a place where you can go post your MP3s. There's also ReverbNation.com, and that's one I've been using for a long time, not necessarily for my podcast, even though I did once put sort of spoken word on there, but it's a, it's a good one to use as just another place to put it, and they have all sorts of other cool services. Um, if you're doing music, then it's really convenient for some of its artist services, but also there, there's no limit. So if I remember, like I've uploaded lots of songs there, I've never run into an issue where there was a limit to how many songs. So I don't have this, that's it, which is an issue on SoundCloud. Although I think SoundCloud allows you to put higher quality audio for streaming and downloading. Um, cool. And then again, the video. So I mentioned before that I record using things like, um, uh, basically I record these episodes using Boss Jock. So that way I have that live sound. So that way I can play that intro music without having to do post editing. And then I also use Voice Recorder Pro 7, which allows me to actually create it, the audio into a video using a picture. So you can use that same image you use to share everywhere else as a way to create the video and then post it on YouTube. So the point is, the more places you put it, the more reach you have. But then on all those networks, just posting on there doesn't make it, make it magically happen. On places like maybe YouTube, you have a little bit more wiggle room with being discovered. So YouTube is definitely heavily worth doing because a lot of people are constantly searching YouTube for stuff. So basically having a video on YouTube with a title that describes why people would listen to your podcast. So that way when it pops up in their searches is valuable. So yeah, there's, they're looking for a video and they end up catching your podcast, but now they hear about it and they go back to iTunes, Google play, Stitcher, 
and listen to your podcast. At the same time, once you build up enough of a following on YouTube, you can monetize the YouTube videos as well. So I want to leave it at that for today. We'll talk more about marketing and monetizing, etc. in the uh, next episode. Thank you very much.